Hello everybody, welcome back to another Dojo Game Review. And today I'm going to do another game by Kaspar, another uh, Carlsbad structure. And one of the things I want to stress right off the bat is um, I definitely see improvement in Kaspar's writing about the game. Um, and I think that's a key skill to learn in order to improve. Uh, just being able to articulate yourself and it takes practice that you shouldn't expect and no one should expect it'll come super easy to articulate their own ideas. So that's one of the main reasons that whenever I do this show I always show the notes of the person who uh, submitted the game. And uh, I love what he says right off that uh, he did not use the engine and like I said in another video which will be linked below is that um, the, it's not that you shouldn't ever use the engine, it's just that you should look at your game first and try to see it through human eyes before you use the engine. And I think there'll be a couple moments in this game where we'll see why that's really important and useful. Okay, so let's get into it. And here he's playing a, a very strong 2200 National Master player. And right away, uh, I like his choice of opening. And what I mean by that is, even though this position maybe is just simply equal, I feel that Kaspar has, with this opening, uh, achieved a couple things. If you're able to play knight c3, first of all, and move three, it's going to simplify your life. It's going to make your life easier against a variety of openings. The queen's gambit, the client, the Benoni, for example. And so as long as you have some system that you understand, then it will be a practical advantage. So here we go, d5. This is all pretty well-known stuff, but it's a very uh, tricky position. And I think there's some secrets. Uh, one of the first secrets is, let's play c6. One of the first secrets is that if black ever tries to snip this thing, which is going to be the intuition of many of your opponents, you welcome it because you have one bad piece here. And taking on f4 is really an example of somebody who didn't really get the memo that pawns aren't people because this bishop will be helped, this bishop is black's best piece, and the pawn on f4, and this is the thing, the pawn on f4 will become annoying to black in our pursuit of space on the king side and potentially a king side attack. Okay, but that's the lesson of another day. Black doesn't go for that, but instead plays bishop knight a6. Very nice. I like it a lot. And I like that Kaspar didn't even think about taking that knight. Don't take that thing. It needs to spend time to get back into the game, which is what Black, I think, correctly invests some time into fixing the knight. Okay, so we now we trade it. And uh, Kaspar says that this is equal. Now, maybe it is, okay, but very rich position, and I love your move because now black has to make a judgment call about what to do. And I thought myself about this when I was analyzing this game, thinking about, well, what would I do as black? And um, I've had similar positions as black myself, and it's kind of a, let's just say there's many. You can move the knight on f6 somewhere, like we're going to talk about that in the game, but obviously a5 is a thought, c5 is a thought, b6 is a thought. I kind of like b6 just with the idea of advancing to c5 and then being able to cap recapture with the pawn. But also maybe rook e8 just to see, then we'll throw it back to white, say, well, what do you want to do? Unclear <laughs> what white wants to do. Because one of the nice things for white is when we flip the board, black's going to give us some information on this next move. And one of the nice things I want to talk about not using the computer is the computer will make it seem obvious whatever of those plans is the best. Um, in fact, on a practical game, it's going to be more of an, an intuitive call. And that intuition will be honed in your analysis of your games, honestly, or maybe analysis of classic games. And you don't want to think forever at the board on positions that aren't tactical. Like, this is not a tactical position. Black simply has to make a judgment call about which plan he or she wants to do here. And uh, Evan plays knight e8. And um, 
I'm not a huge fan of this move, knight e8. And we'll talk about it in a second. So bishop e1, fine. We're fixing one of our bad pieces, and now it's actually going to be a great piece. Um, and so, yeah, it's questionable what we're doing as black, I feel. Because mm, unless you can get away with knight d6 here, which has its own questions about maybe white gets to achieve e4 right away, I don't then like f5, which I presume was the intention of black when he played knight e8. And um, I think this is a great opportunity then to talk about some of the plans of the Carlsbad and kind of extend uh, or give some examples of what we were talking about uh, in our last uh, game analysis with Kaspar that I'll link below. So the issue with f5, okay, is first of all, black is clearly saying to himself, well, if I make e4 difficult, then I've achieved something. But there's a lot of problems that black has given himself by playing the f pawn. Obvious that this has become poor. Uh, and something I feel like both players didn't seize upon here was that this square is now very tender. So in the last video, I said there were basically three plans to play when you're playing against the Carlsbad. Okay, uh, basically the Carlsbad is this pawn structure, this kind of thing versus this kind of thing, right? Um, that is the Carlsbad structure, and the F pawn is kind of one of the big questions. Now, what I did in the video why the minority attack is for commoners is I listed the three plans, one being the minority attack, which I said was the worst. I go in detail about that in that video. And then using the F pawn, either for something like this, F3, or to play F4, and I mistakenly said in that video that that was the um, Marshall attack when I meant the Pillsbury attack. Someone corrected me in the notes. Um, and in this position, you might say, well, f4, how is that possible? Well, I think here, once we see f5, now all of a sudden, Frederico, the f-pawn, to me, knows his fate. Um, and I don't like f5, so I have the opposite reaction that Evan did. And Evan, just one thing psychologically I've noticed is I've noticed that a lot of times your opponent makes a move like this, and then you immediately underestimate your position in the notes. And that's another value of not using the computer because the computer will make it seem like, oh, you know, obviously F5 was right or it was wrong. But yeah, when you go over your games and you start seeing like, oh, I'm, I'm underestimating my position. I'm actually doing great here. Um, yeah, that's a value of the self-analysis that comes about through analyzing your games. So in this position, here's a very important thing that has to do with time management. You spent 12 minutes, and thank you for writing it down, um, and one of the things that my coach, the anonymous KGB, that's what I'm calling him, has turned me on to is when you think forever on a move, it's generally a sign that you are lost. I don't mean lost in terms of lost chess, but like you're lost in life. You're just swimming around in the position going back and forth through various moves. And that shows that F5 really did throw you off your balance, even though I don't think it should. And so knowing possible plans really is a way, you know, around this, because when I see F5, the, the, the plan becomes very immediate. So let's look at your notes. And you write 92 G5. Yeah, to me that's a real cringer, G5. Because all your all your business is now on the king's side. Now notice in the last game, okay, we were talking about the Carlsbad structure. There was a knight on F3, and the knight prevented the F pawn from participating. But now, oh, it's a different business. We've got more pawns essentially on the king's side of the board and more force. So g5 seems horrendous, and the simple plan now, and this, by the way, I think would be the plan with or without g5, is to play bishop g3, park that thing there, and then support it with f4. And then you could say to me, cry, well, what about the knight on e2? Well, the bishop is going to have to get taken 
whether with or without g5. And then the knight will come to either f4 or d4 because you're going to have a nice choice when he takes. Do you want to take back this way or this way? And that pawn on e5 will be a major force in the position. So I think you're doing great. I definitely don't think he should play g5 here. Um, but already I like your position a lot. And you could also begin with the move bishop g3. There's nothing that's maybe a little bit more sensible to begin with bishop g3. But the knight on c3 is poor. And we do want to find a reroute for him. And one of the, uh, the plans that can kind of go through our mind, and we're going to see this in the game too, is some kind of routing through d3 to e5. That's also going to be a possible thought. And we're going to see. There was chances for you with this e5 square later, too, when we get to the tactical mayhem that's going to come up in a second. Okay, so queen b1, obviously a weird move. You don't have to be a, a, you know, a psychologist with the CIA to know that queen b1 is a strange move. Okay, knight d6, passive. Bishop wanted to be on g3. Knight a4, weird. Now you're spinning, right? You're spinning your wheels because this thing has put you off guard. Now let's just play a couple moves and see what happens. Good move. A little strange, I get it. Okay, probably a good move. I like it. I like it, uh, this rook a2. Makes sense to me. Good move. Uh, is he clearly better? I don't actually know. I don't actually know because... The pawn on f5 is nobody's hero, and uh, your, your pieces aren't that bad. Now, queen c1 certainly looks like the move of somebody who doesn't feel good about the position. But let's keep going a second. Knight b2, okay, interesting. b5, rook e1, okay. Now, at this point, if I was coaching Evan, this would be the moment I would say, Evan, listen, buddy. Let's talk about your possible plans here. But for now, let's focus on you, Kaspar. So, queen e7, bishop e1, beautiful, beautiful. f4, and you give this an exclam. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about this. Uh, I'm not sh certain about this at all. So what I see happening in the position is I see... Uh, that if you, then in addition to e4, I'm not even, a, I don't know why that's impossible. And I also see this happening. Uh, and bare minimum, I see this happening and this happening. So I'm not a huge fan of f4. And like I said, I think if, if I was coaching Evan, we'd be talking about this position and the different plans he might play here. Um, we could talk about a5 even, you know? Um, in any case, we're going to leave that to him. And I think you are doing fine here. So again, you're underestimating your position. And one of the hilarious things here that you write, it's not hilarious, it's just important, is you, you write that after e4, you, you didn't see that maybe the bishop would be attacking the rook. And I, I say hilarious because what's going to happen is if he goes for the rook, I think he's going he's gonna to inherit the wind if he goes for that rook. All right, so let's look at what happened. Knight e3. Now, I got to admit, any time somebody gets a knight in my face like that, it's not the most pleasant thing. Sometimes, though, a knight like that can be a tourist. And arguably, he's a little bit of a tourist here. So, queen c6. Ballsy. <laughs> Ballsy. Um, and I want to just point out, you know, I don't really know what's going on in this position, but knight d3 is already a really interesting move because if he takes, like I said, this knight's coming to hopping to e5, our old friends, e5. And it's a real thing. It's a real thing. And I'm not convinced about this knight on e3. I'm really not. And of course, we can take it at any point. But that doesn't mean your queen c6 was wrong. And look what you write. e5 is the only logical move. I don't know. Queen c6 look good to me. Look good to me. Let's look at the, what you said was wrong about queen c6. You said rook c8, 
queen b5, d e4, and the roof is caving in. Now, again, I, I don't necessarily look at the computer here when I do this stuff. Uh, so maybe I'm missing something. But if I just imagine, say, f e4, I don't see it. I don't see why the roof's caving in. Now, again, maybe I'm missing something. But to me, I don't know. I don't see why you're doing so bad. Again, let him take that rook. <laughs> please, 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 please take my rook. <laughs> please, please take it. And I think what you, what happened here, let's take a look. So you played D, D, E4, and you took with the queen. And I think the thinking there on your part is you're saying to yourself, okay, now I'm not going to necessarily lose the exchange because I'm looking at H7. And queen takes E4 might be fine, but I just want to say, I, Again, I, I don't know what's wrong with your position here. Now, queen, again, queen e4 might be fine, but f e4 also looks pretty good. Queen e4, g6, bishop e3. Now you say forced. I don't know. I don't know anything about this being forced. So, for example, let's say I play knight d3. Why is this so bad? Let's say, let's say he takes. I assume that was your fear, right? And then, and then we plop this big fat dude right on e5. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about it all. I don't know about anything here. It looks really, at the, at the bare minimum, I'm, it's a fun game for you, right? You know, you've got some, yeah, you got a pawn and a beautiful knight. I don't see really any counterplay. And this guy's a beast. Okay, so that's just to say I don't think bishop e3 is forced. You think it's forced because you think you have to keep the exchange. But think about it. That, that rook, he, he, you would have to spend some time to get it in. This bishop no longer really wants to be here because of g6, so it wants to be on a2. Please, please take my rook. Please, please, please take my rook. All right, so you did this. Boom. d5. Bishop f5. Queen takes, rook takes, and um, now you give a long line where you are equal, and um, truly, uh, this is a hard position, you know, let's say I'm playing a game, I don't know exactly what's happening here, no, not, not really a clue. Um, it's, of course, a little dangerous for you with that pawn. Uh, let's go through your variations, so boom, boom. Now, you're pawn hunting here. I don't know if you need to be pawn hunting, but let's look at your pawn hunting. Yeah, you really went to pawn hunting. It's true, though. You probably win the thing. And that's a fancy way of not losing your, your, your business. Okay. Um, yeah. Notice what you're doing is you are... Um, what, what you're doing is you are trying to force like a draw. And I don't think you need to force a draw or anything. I, you know, I think you have everything to play for here. Like after knight d3, I don't know why you're worse, for example. That's what happens. Rook d8, right? And now I'm assuming that if you wanted, let's say, equality, you could play f4. I don't know, but it might be more than the quality. I don't know, but I'm just trying to say I don't know why you're worse. Oh, you and you write this, F4. You should be fine, yeah. Okay, so that's to say then that knight d3 isn't necessarily a mistake. I think knight d3 is fine. Okay, so g4. Now the question is, how bad is it? Now, one thing you don't write about, but I'm just sensing here, is that your intuition was something like, well... If I go into an opposite color position, it'll be a draw. And we've done other lectures here at the dojo where we've seen that, no, it's just not true. Um, I want to stress that, uh, you know, there's a common misconception that these things end in a draw. This position, I, I'm not that worried for you, or I'm not convinced it should be that bad for you, simply because that pawn should be easily blockaded, right? 
And what's the whole reason that people think they're off in a draw? It's because you can't pass through the blockade square. The pass pawn can't pass through the square, in this case, e2. So you play bishop e4, and you like bishop c2. Later you do, a, excuse me, bishop e2. I also just intuitively think that's, that's a good-looking move, you know? Let's look, though, at the game. So you say rook d2 minus plus. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And you say rook d2, e d2, hopeless. Again, I feel you are being um, too pessimistic. Yeah, too pessimistic about the position. Because, see, you are going to be able to blockade uh, on, the, on this square. Now, will you perhaps suffer a little bit? Maybe, but your king is coming. Your king is coming over here. Okay, so rookie two, okay, here. That's, that's a clever looking move. We gotta give it that. Rook c3, king g2, so that's obviously a blunder. But let's contemplate this here. Um, king f1, bishop h4, and you write, it will be Zugzwang soon. Yeah, I don't get it. Let's say uh, rook d2, king, uh, excuse me, ed, king here. Is it really that bad? Maybe it is. I, I don't know. To me, it's just not clear that it's so horrendous. Uh, you know, it might... It's, I'm worried. <laughs> I'm definitely worried. But like I said, I'm not sure it's horrendous time yet. It might, it might be getting close with rook e3. But again, I'm not, not a hundred percent. For example, uh, if rook e3, king d2, rook a3, king e2, rook, or so let's go somewhere smarter like king e1, Rook a2, bishop b3, excuse me, you have the trick. So he doesn't even have a threat yet. Okay, so a uh, couple things that I'm hoping you get out of that, Kaspar. How to play the opening? Beautiful opening because you can get some experience with it. It's a structure. So they'll throw all kinds of different things at you and you will have a vocabulary of moves and plans that you can choose from. And then... Notice about yourself that you are underestimating a lot of your positions. Uh, you become fearful and then decide that everything is lost when in fact, no, it's not even close to lost. Um, and then finally, I think this is uh, praise to you, but also anybody out there doing their own game reviews, that uh, this is what it takes to improve, to slow it down, write it out and you will improve both your ability on the chessboard and your ability to write about it which are honestly kind of part and parcel of the same thing okay so i hope you guys enjoyed that and i'll see you next time on the dojo game review bye bye